Hello, uh, my name is Mark Bryson. I'm a Sunday school teacher at Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. Uh, it is my privilege this week to teach the lesson. Uh, appreciate the opportunity uh, to do so. Uh, the title of our lesson this week is Knowing God. And the point of our lesson is our hearts are satisfied as we encounter God through his word. And our lesson does come from Psalm 119, verses 17 through 24. I'm going to uh, pray for us, and then we'll get started with our lesson. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit, before I get ahead of myself, we'll, we'll, we'll pray, and then we'll get started. And we'll talk a little bit about this, uh, the 119th Psalm. Well, let's pray, and we'll get started. Lord, we thank you so much uh, for the privilege and the opportunity to call upon you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that uh, even though we uh, are limited as far as how we can get gather together, we are thankful that we can uh, gather uh, through the power of technology uh, to be able to uh, still meet uh, for Sunday school. Uh, we thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you would uh, be with us as we study our lesson. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, help us to help us to clear our hearts and clear our minds. Help us to focus on you uh, and what you have for us through this lesson, Lord. Help us to just put aside all the cares and the worries of the world just for a moment, and uh, just uh, just really uh, really focus on what you have for us, Lord. Just help us to do that. Lord, we do pray for our country. Uh, we do want to focus uh, at this time on our lesson, but do, Lord, we do uh, want to not neglect the opportunity to, to pray for our country, for the leadership of our country, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, be with our leaders, to, uh, turn their hearts and their minds to you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would help them to make wise decisions. I pray, Lord, that you would help them to make decisions that would honor you. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, just be with our country as a whole, Lord. I pray that you would just uh, help us uh, as as your people uh, to be that light in the world that this world so desperately needs. Again, we thank you so much for the opportunity to call upon you, Lord, and just help us uh, to really hone in on what you have for us today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Uh, as I said, we're looking at uh, the 119th Psalm, looking at verses uh, 17 through 24. Um, I'm gonna, I think I'll go ahead and read through those verses first, and then we'll come back and talk about some specifics uh, out of a few of those verses. Uh, but uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 119, verses 17 through 24, the, the Bible says, Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live. And keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the, for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed and which do err from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt. For I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me. But thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. <clears throat> um, it's, it's interesting. Um, psalm, the, the 119th Psalm is the largest. Um, the, there's 176 verses um, in the 119th Psalm, and, and they're arranged in in, in 22 um, eight verse sections, and they they it's it's an acrostic. It's each uh, each one of these sections begin with the with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, it would have helped. Having it laid out in this uh, this fashion would would help 
uh, aid in studying and memorizing it. Um, because it didn't really, each, each section followed a, 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 a common theme, but, but the whole book did not really have a, it was not a, uh, every idea did not fit together. It was meant to be studied in sections, uh, if that makes sense. But the, the Psalms overall, overall theme is, is delighting in the Word of God. But, uh, each, each section had a specific theme. So it's, it's just kind of neat, uh, to, to talk about some of that stuff. It really, uh, doesn't really matter as far as our lesson. It's just, it just is what it is. I, I, I enjoy, um, learning about things like that, even though it may not really matter. But I just find it interesting, uh, some of those facts about the 119th Psalm. But let's look, uh, specifically at verses 17 and 18 first. Um, Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things of thy law. Verses 17 and 18 served as a, as a prayer for the psalmist. Um, the opening words of, of both verses present the the request by the psalmist to God. Um, the psalmist had confidence that, that God was, that God is there, that God wants to help us, and that God has the power to help us. The writer's request that God deal bountifully with him um, there was a Hebrew term uh, that the that the lesson writer gives us here, gamal, and and that has a meaning of dealing well with or re, or rewarding a person, and that's what the the psalmist was was kind of getting at. The psalmist prayer suggested that he expected God to relate to him not with judgment but with mercy and goodness um, but we have to understand realize that that the writer described his relationship with God uh, as God's servant he was God's servant um, and that that implied that he had been faithful. Um, to God, uh, he he was faithful in all of his actions uh, to God. So he expected that God would um, treat him with mercy and with goodness and with kindness. The psalmist prayed that God would deal generously with him, so that he might live and keep God's word. His request for life had 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 a purpose. It had, it had a uh, it had a purpose more than just he wanted God to be good to him. He he wanted to uh, he wanted to be blessed. He he did. We all do. But his desire was to keep God's word, and he wanted God to bless him uh, so that he so that it would be easier for him to do the work. That God had called him to do. The second request that the psalmist made there in verse eighteen was that God would open his eyes. Um, the image of, of opening a person's eyes was used metaphorically throughout the Bible. Um, it, it speaks of gaining insight and, and seeing with clarity. Um, for understanding and for truth. Um, the psalmist's request that, that God would open his eyes was, was a spiritual plea to God that, that God would grant understanding um, of his word and of his ways. Continuing on there with the thought uh, what the what the psalmist was thinking there 
he identified the desires behind the request. He, um, he said, um, open, thine, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. These wondrous things are the very decrees uh, which God had declared in his word. Um, in, in, in God's word, he revealed himself and what he expects from us, how we should live, um, what he expects from us, and all, all of those things in his word. And those are the uh, wondrous things that the psalmist is wanting to understand fully. Continuing on there um, in those next verses, verse 19 said, I'm a stranger in the earth. Hide not thou, hide not thy commandments from me. Um, knowing God through his word helps us face oppositions. Um, verses 19 and 22, 19 through 22, um, help us to understand. They, they reveal that once Scripture is understood, then it must be put to work. Um, and we, we, we have to, we have to ask ourselves, do we, do we really know God and his word if we aren't living out the truths of his word in our lives? Um, if, if we are living for him and, and his word, then we will face opposition. Um, living out of, in obedience to God comes with a with a with a price um, especially in today's culture um, to help us uh, well the, the psalmist clearly says there also that um, he was a stranger in the earth uh, other other ways of saying that would be a foreigner or a sojourner. Um, Christians live in this world, but they're not of this world. Um, the Bible the Bible states that many different times. Um, because believers are not part of this world, and we act differently, those of the world um, hate them. Um, Jesus, at, at his trial, Jesus um, told Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. Um, Jesus said that his followers are in the world, but not of this world. Um, Peter wrote of the believers as, as strangers and pilgrims. Um, Paul told the Christians in Ephesus that uh, in, in Christ, they were fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Um, to know God is to face opposition, um, and that's just the way it is. Oftentimes, um, knowing God means that uh, knowing God and reverently fearing God and obeying God, carrying out God's commandments, uh, may cause you to be an outcast in this world. Uh, you may very well be cursed and insulted. Um, Jesus was. And if he suffered uh, beatings and worse, then who are we to think uh, that we are above it? Um, those of this world ultimately crucified him. We may not face that. 
we may, who's to say, but um, we can thank God that we can um, find comfort knowing that God, through his word, helps us to face the oppositions um, that we do face. Most likely, um, in relation to the persecution that, that uh, the psalmist was was suffering, he he sought God's commandments. Um, the Bible tells us that the psalmist recognized that that alone he could not deal with the realities of life that he was facing. Um, he, he knew that that true safety and security were to be found in his relationship with God and and in his obedience to God's commandments. Um, the Bible repeatedly speaks of God's displeasure with the proud. Um, one of the the differences between a, a healthy self-confidence and, and pride is the need for others. Um, particularly, partic particularly God, uh, the need for God. And, and many, if, if not, if not most, um, proud people see little or no need for God or for others to help them uh, develop a, a proper lifestyle. Um, proud people find it very hard um, to allow others to, to help them. Now, it doesn't mean that um, um, having a sense of self-worth or, or having a, a confidence in yourself and your ability uh, with God. It doesn't mean that that's wrong, uh, but it does mean that uh, having a self-sufficiency in, 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 in respect of uh, I can do this on my own and, and not needing anyone else or God, specifically God, um, In uh, what we find here, though, by the psalmist example, is that he he recognized his need for God. He was he was not uh, he was not exhibiting his um, independence from God. He was um, full aware of his dependence on God and on God's word in his life. Um, God's word also helped the psalmist to deal with uh, the arrogant people that he came and came, was persecuted by. And uh, the psalmist explained that the proud are those who are cursed, who err from God's commandments. Um, The psalmist asked God to remove reproach and contempt, also in verse 22. To treat people with contempt means to um, to disrespect them, to dislike them, to despise them, to uh, be condescending, condescending toward them. Um, and and as Christians, we face a very similar situation to that uh, today. Uh, those who follow God and, and obey God and his word um, are often not well received uh, by our culture and our society. And the actions that we see against us um tend to reveal what is what is wrong <laughs> in the world. Um, you know, 
we find the world often celebrates uh, mocking Christians, mocking Jesus, mocking the teachings of the Bible. It's often uh, the, the Bible and Jesus and Christians are often the butt of jokes uh, in our culture, in our society. Ye years ago, it wasn't that way. And not too long ago, it wasn't that way. Not too many years ago, um, there was a, even, even among the worst of sinners, there was a respect for godly men and women. There was a respect for God's house and God's property. There was a respect for God's word, even among those who would not call themselves a Christian and would not even darken the doors of, uh, darken the doorstep of, of a church. There was still a respect and a reverence for God and the things of God and the people of God. But we see a difference in our culture today. Previously, uh, the psalmist in, in the verses prior to verse 23, the psalmist had identified sources of persecution um, as, as proud and, and those who reproached him and treated him with contempt. But here in verse 23, he identified a third source of persecution coming from government, coming from the government, from government officials, from princes is what, it, what the, the Bible specifically says. Persecution can come from a variety of sources. Um, we, we find this very true in our culture today. Um, there'll be people around you who will follow the wisdom of the world instead of, of God's word. And it, and it's, uh, it can be discouraging <laughs> and it can be uh, scary in a way, but it, it doesn't matter who may be against you. Your call is to remain in fellowship with God through Christ and through continually uh, meditating on God's word. Taking, taking refuge in God's word was a, it was a repeated um, action on the part of the psalmist. Taking refuge in God's word was not a one-time thing. It was a, it was a, uh, it was a lifestyle. Instead of responding directly to those officials who were persecuting him, the psalmist chose to respond by taking refuge in God's word. Um, when, when we face persecution or, or any, uh, anything bad that happens to us, any, any bad experience that we go through, um, we have two choices. We can turn to God in faith, or we can move away from Him in hurt and anger and doubt and fear. When the psalmist faced persecution for being faithful to God and His Word, he chose to cling even tighter to God. He understood that God was the source of his strength. And, and, and my prayer for me and for us as, as God's people is to always be so close to God that we choose to respond to persecution by turning to him and to his word and not hiding in fear. Verse 24, the psalmist did not, did not deny the reality of his situation, but, but neither did he dwell on it. Um, verse 24 said, thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors, um, 
the emotional response of the psalmist reflected the spiritual maturity that that he possessed. God's testimonies, he said, were his delight. The psalmist loved God and loved God's word. He reflected the attitude of God's desires for every person. Um, even when when Jesus asked, when Jesus was asked, what the greatest commandment? What what was the what was the greatest commandment? Uh, what was the greatest commandment of God's law? Um, Jesus replied, "Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment." And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Um, when a person centers his life on God and his word, all aspects of his life are affected for good. Um in other words, when, when, when things are not going right, when things are not going good, when, when, when it feels like the world is against you, the first place to start is to go back to the beginning and say, am I, am I doing those things? Am I, am I, am I praying? Am I spending time alone with God? Am I, am I reading my Bible? Am I allowing God to speak to me, to give me clarity, to help me to, 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 to draw that strength that He has provided? When we are centered on God, when we are focused when our life is in focus. It doesn't mean that persecution won't come. It doesn't mean that bad things won't happen. It doesn't mean that everything will go just as planned. It means that when those things happen, when persecution does come, when bad things do happen, we'll be prepared for it. And we'll see it for what it is, not that the world's rising up against us, not that, uh, uh, not that. Oh, we're, we're uh, here. We go again. It's it's one more, one more, uh, one more weight against us. It, it's not that. It is. We live in a fallen world. We live in a cursed world. Um, uh, sin has cursed this world. And and yes, it, it it's yes. It may be. Uh, it may seem as though it's spiraling out of control. But God has a plan. God has a purpose for us. And in the midst of the storm, there can be clarity and there can be peace. And that's what God wishes for us. Not only were God's testimonies, the, the psalmist delight, they were also his counselors, he said. With God's word at the center of his life, God's, God's guidance and, and God's advice were available to the psalmist to guide him in, in, in all of the situations that he encountered. We've said before, we, a few weeks ago, and we, we've said before, and it's true that it's, it's very important to listen to, um, to, to God, to have godly counsel, to listen to those godly people whom the Lord puts in our lives. That's, that's one of the ways that God speaks to us is through, uh, through those godly people, uh, preachers and teachers and friends and family who are good godly people. And it's good to, to have someone to talk to and, and to, to listen to, uh, and God will speak to us through them. It's good to have those people that we can trust and who know us, but they cannot replace God's word. They cannot replace 
God himself in our lives. God's word is perfect and infallible. Not that we can't trust those people, but we can't rely on them solely. They're, they're good to have. They're good to talk to. They're good to have somebody to talk to. And God often speaks to us in that way, but if we're not going to God directly, then that gives place to the devil. We have to be careful there too. When we seek God through his word, our relationship with him is strengthened. We, we grow in Christ. And this helps us face opposition, opposition and, and, and keep the right perspective. From the moment we wake up in the morning, until we lie down to sleep at night, we're constantly bombarded with nonstop messages on TV and, and through social media and, and on all of our electronic devices. Um, all of these messages are, are, are flooding us and our minds and our, our, our ear gates and our eye gates, um, attempting to, to shape what we think about and how we think and how we should live with all these voices that are demanding our attention only God's word can keep us focused and thinking clearly and correctly about life when you feel like when you feel bombarded and you feel overwhelmed and you feel like you don't know where to turn the first, first thing to check up is, am I reading? Am I allowing God to speak to me through his word? Uh, we're instructed to cleanse our mind, and, and that is how we do it. We, we push out all of the trash and the filth by putting in what is good and holy and wholesome from the word of God. We have to... Listen first and foremost to God and to God's word. And then measure all the other messages that we're given according to what God's word tells us. What does God command us? What does God tell us about how we should live and how we, how we should think and how we should act? If the messages that are coming from all those different directions don't line up uh, with God's word, then that's our first indicator that they're wrong. Always remember, our strength is found in God, in God's word, in allowing God to speak to us. And that is where clarity comes from. That is where uh, strength comes from. That is where peace comes from to combat all the other things that are coming at us every day. I hope uh, that I was able to say something uh, that uh, might help you. I find great help from the Psalms. Um, I'm, I've mentioned that before. I always enjoy reading the Psalms and, and I enjoy studying the Psalm. Um, and I encourage you to do the same. Um, I thank you for the opportunity church to, to do this, um, for giving me this opportunity. Um, I thank you for uh, listening to me. And if you're visiting with us, uh, I appreciate that. And uh, check out the website, um, check out the Facebook page. You can contact us uh, through, the face, through the website or the Facebook page. Um, our pastor would find great joy in knowing that he could be a help to you. Um, it's been it's been a blessing that through everything that we faced uh, in in the last year, it's been a blessing that we've been able to continue to uh, at least uh, be able to meet either through video or live stream. That that's been a tremendous blessing. I'm so thankful for the technology to be able to do that. Um, so just continue to uh, pray for the church and for our pastor. Uh, continue to pray for our country. Um, we all need it. But uh, 
we're done and I'm going to pray for us and then we'll be finished. Lord, again, we thank you so much for the opportunity to call upon you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the leadership and the guidance and the wisdom and the understanding and clarity that we can gain from it. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to never take for granted uh, all of the things that you've given us, especially your word, especially salvation through your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for those. We pray, Lord, that uh, all those who uh, might hear this lesson, I pray that you would uh, just help them to have understanding and clarity. I pray, Lord, that you would prepare the way for this lesson, that um, it would it would reach those hearts and those minds uh, that you that you intend for it to. Again, we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.